Okay, the the enemy force pull is 69 to 74, and weapons and training are 50 to 55. So this should be interesting. The actual numbers that we're going to face are 75,000, almost 76. My army is 42-3. So some of the units in my army don't show up, and that's typical for Gettysburg. So I built a bunch of ballast units, and the ballast dropped the initial number on the starting screen by 1,000 men and 30 guns, which might translate to 2,000 men over the entire battle. Maybe 60 guns. So I was limited, seriously limited, in what I could build. You might notice that not every artillery unit is 12, because I, if I added guns, the number of guns the enemy had went up. And I have a lot of units that are 500. And the reason is, if I tried to build larger units than 500, it also drove up scaling. So, yeah, this is really interesting, because on day four, I have two entire divisions of um, just 500 men in each unit. And that's a pretty weak force. Third division actually comes in. Two divisions of third division come in on the last day. So, yeah, I have lots of weapons in the inventory. But I find out it, in Gettysburg that um, I take a lot of casualties. I take 6,600, and even if 1,000 of them are allied troops, that's still a lot. And I, I know some of you are thinking, well, 20,000 is more like what you lose at Gettysburg not 5,000. So, even so, I cannot afford to keep my army at three stars and two stars. It's just too expensive. And, and the reason is, I find I really like good weapons, and I want to buy more good weapons. And I can't buy good weapons and keep my army at, at the level that it is. And also, the last part of the game after Gettysburg is just a grind. So I'm going to have to lose some of these stars in some of these units. I have way too many three-star units and way too many two-star units. And the units have to get bigger than 1250 for the final battles. But anyway, right now I have a very large inventory of weapons and a huge inventory of majors. I need those for the ballast units. And uh, I recommend going into Gettysburg in every grand battle with a good selection of good officers. And it turns out I need some of those too. So yeah, the enemy has 75,000, which hits me as uh, large. I didn't expect the AI to have 75,000 in Gettysburg. I expected with the size of my army that he'd have closer to 55 to 60. So I'm really surprised in the opening phases of this. I expected these units to do better than they actually do here. Uh, some of these segments have been uh, sped up. And what I want to do is catch the enemy in the water where he has zero cover. And I do. And I expect this to have a really positive, powerful effect on the enemy units. That they're just kind of shrugging off these hits. I mean, I'm inflicting casualties, but they seem to be doing a lot more to the morale of my units than I'm doing to them. Uh, my units, I have three units that have already are already retreating. And yeah, they recover, but I expected this to... Well, when you play on normal difficulty, this kind of goes the other way. And not entirely sure why, but I'm hitting him with, uh, in the water, most of the shots, he's in the water, and um, my units are the ones that are breaking, and his units are holding. So I get the uh, artillery out of there right away. I can't hold that position. And um, we want to set up a defensive position. I don't intend to hold the North Woods. I have a, I have a different plan for the Battle of Gettysburg. I want to kind of drag this out over all of the battles. I don't see any reason to wipe the enemy out in the first phase. 
there there are um, a whole bunch of phases. I I kind of lost count how many there are, and there there are great places to fight battles, and I would just as soon fight some of these battles when I have second and third core on the field and fourth core and um, let them do some of the fighting. First core doesn't have to do all the fighting. So I have decided just to fight kind of a calculated battle. And I don't see any reason to race up to the North Woods and you have to sprint. You have to run up there and get your army tired when I just plan on retreating back to Gettysburg anyway. So that's going to be my plan, is to move up and take this southern clump of woods, this, this ridge line, let the enemy attack me, uh, roll up my artillery, inflict casualties on the enemy, and then fall back to Gettysburg, which is a really good defensive position. And hopefully the AI attacks aggressively and I can um, get artillery in the battle. And one of the reasons is, in that northern section, it's really good defensive terrain. Maybe three units could make it up there, and I wouldn't have any artillery. So, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to do that. I've never tried this strategy before, and it pretty much unfolds the way I want it to. About a thousand of the casualties I, exp I had in this battle have to be this cav. So they take a lot of losses. And so far, I don't think I have made one enemy unit retreat yet. The enemy force is a lot stronger on Major General than on normal difficulty. This was a very, very different fight, the first phase of Gettysburg. And there the first unit retreats and it's because it got hit by a unit with 1861s. If you've played this and everyone watching this has, uh, one cool thing to do is to come in and hit the enemy in the flank. And so, yeah, that's what I'm doing taking advantage of bringing in some units and hitting the enemy in the flank, because they'll advance toward the objective and you get some nice flank shots. So I'm having one detached skirmisher, or, or Devon dismounted cav, go after the general. If I can kill the general, that would be a huge plus. And the other one, I just want, him, I want the uh, cav, and I wanted this from the beginning, uh, dismounted uh, allied cav to take shots on his artillery and if if it does nothing else at least the artillery will be tied up fighting against Devon and not worried about my infantry he charges against the allied unit and then two of my infantry fire into his flank and that's great And here's some easy flank shots in the south. That's that's going to work out really well. So the idea is to put my units on the ridge line in really good cover. Take shots at his uh, units in the open while, you know, getting some cheap and easy flank shots. And yeah, that worked really well. His units were seriously degraded, pushed back, like in that. So yeah, the numbers that I see right now on my units are, my units are getting lots of kills and his units are taking lots of hits. So this is all going really well. And picking away at his artillery, also very nice. And two of his commanders are, I notice, are on the far left side of the map because I'm taking shots at his artillery. That's, that's also great.
So here come the first group of reinforcements. Man, my guys uh, destroyed, shattered that three-star unit. So one down. Let's see if these other guys can get a shot on this. Uh, yeah, two three-star units gone. That's nice. Shattered. And these guys are going to kill an artillery and maybe kill a commander on the far left. So all that's going really well. Yeah, down to uh, a very tiny number on that artillery. Okay, I forgot about the reinforcements coming in for the south. And I have that detached skirmisher who's in the wrong place. Need to get him out of there. And the enemy units have roller skates. And they're coming from all directions. So... Yeah, my, my, my cav unit cannot move at the speed of his charging infantry. But he does actually get away. It's amazing. So I move up some units to go ahead and get into Gettysburg. Uh, because I'm going to fall back from this hill position. I want to inflict losses on the enemy here for a while. Hopefully he'll attack. Then we have about even numbers, I guess. So he's charging with a whole bunch of troops. Now what I should do here is probably fall back but I have such good units right there, I want to charge. And just see what my melee units can do against his two-star units. And uh, I didn't know he had four of them. But we're going we're gonna to see what we can do to him. So I charge into it, and his first unit breaks. Now these will be... Uh, I'm not going to get 10 to 1 kills here. But my units are going to get a buff to melee. They're going to get melee experience. And as long as we win, then it's all good. So two of the units have been defeated. And right here I lose a major general. So it wasn't worth it. Losing a major general was not, um, was not worth it. And so right now I'm just, I'm, I wish I hadn't done it. I wish I had just had the unit fall back into the artillery, taking the, the enemy taking the canister shots, brought enemies up to give supporting fire, and not just launch right into a big melee attack. The, I mean, it was fun. If I hadn't lost the officer, it would have been great. But it was not worth losing a major general. Uh, I guess that means that the melee went on too long, or the supporting fire because he had four units. I didn't know he had four units there. And so his units were firing supporting fire into the melee. Which, that's really bad. I ended up losing a major general. And I, I hope he just keeps charging across that open ground. Things are quiet pretty much for a little bit, and then he advances more units up, and I get more flank shots on him. So now we go to the next phase, and it's time. I, I just want to go to Gettysburg. So what I want to do is I have this uh, idea for a good defensive position. I mean, look at that lovely river. That's just a perfect defensive line. You have lots of cover in those buildings. 
and then there's there's the river and I want to use the river and the buildings to my advantage and I, I can put all of my artillery in a nice safe place to fire supporting fire into any combat and it just hits me that this is just really really a good defensive position better than the ridge line and I think it is and my hope is that the enemy remains very aggressive like he is now and just takes lots of casualties. So anytime I retreat, I start the artillery off and have the infantry fall back into stages and make sure the artillery gets safely out. The important thing with any retreat, and I've watched people do this on YouTube, is uh, get the artillery started first and have the art the infantry fall back in stages. But if, if you start the infantry and the artillery at the same time, it's probably not going to go well. And I think most retreats that I've seen in Ultimate General Civil War have not gone well for that reason. So if you know you're going to be leaving or might be forced out of a position, get the artillery started first. And now the artillery is far enough away, my infantry can, can start to get out of there. So I have some nice shots on this guy. I'd like to take some shots on him, force him to take some losses, and then we'll get the infantry out. So the infantry can get started moving. The unit that's missing an officer, I want to merge a unit in. And because it's a very good unit, I'll... I end up merging the Iron Brigade. Oh man, I'd love to kill this guy. Kill this uh, skirmisher unit. But he's three star. Yeah, and my guy, that little, that little cav unit in the north is taking shots on artillery. That's great. Anything to cause chaos in the rear of the enemy army. End up falling, everyone falling back, get the JF Browns up to take some shots. Merge uh, a unit into the, to the unit that doesn't have an officer, because you really have to have an officer. And the JF Browns are doing so well, they already have 600 kills and they just got here. So this is what I want. The guy is now coming into the river, he has zero cover. And I just happen to have some infantry and some skirmishers over there. And one of Devin's units, that one, one of the cav units can pitch in. And let's see how this goes. And my artillery, most of my artillery is there waiting on this opportunity. Yep, my infantry is in good cover. He has zero cover because he's in the water. He now has a second unit and I have two more very good units that are going to pile uh, casualties onto this guy. That's just exactly what I was hoping for. That is just perfect. My only hope is that he just keeps charging. So I have to fall back so he'll advance. I want him to keep advancing into the water line. And on the right side, I'm setting up a trap for him. I have three units over there, and I'm going to put an artillery over there. And he always, 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 in every battle I fought, he attacks and he comes sweeping around his left, and he sends three or four units to attack that southernmost victory location. And I want him to do that. I want him to send three or four units down there to attack because those guys will be easily destroyed. I, I have a lovely trap set up for him with artillery, the the dismounted uh, cav units. Now he, he advanced with an infantry and he's just getting his head taken off. My units are taking no casualties if you take a look at how many casualties they're taking. Um, but, but I want to kill three or four units when he attacks uh, that southern objective. And I have this beautiful trap set up 
and it it just he doesn't he doesn't cooperate. So now the AI is going to send a couple units at a time across the river. So all I have to do is shift forces around and shift the art. Well, the artillery is going to shift by itself. So yeah, all I want to do is keep an eye on things and just keep keep hitting the enemy every time he gives me a shot. And this is kind of what I had planned from the very beginning. And this is a really good position. I'm all set up to spring this trap. And the uh, JFs are going to be able to get shots on these guys as they, you know, hopefully some shots on them while they're in the river. And they're three-star units. That's very nice. I think the enemy unit size coming in seems to be about 1,200. I think most of his artillery 10-pounders. Um, but fortunately, my units in the city have very, very good cover. And yeah, I, I really want to kill this, this skirmisher. I really, really, really don't like skirmishers. I can understand why the AR, AI charges them. Uh, I've grown to dislike skirmishers as much as the AI dislikes my skirmishers. They really are annoying. So, yes, got him. I was willing to take a shot from that infantry unit just to kill that uh, skirmisher unit, make sure it didn't come back. Oh, look at those numbers fall. That's terrific. So I can see two more guys advancing in the north, and I want them to advance. I'm creating room for them. And the JF Browns are going to get some great shots at, at distance from the flank and just rack up a bunch of kills. Look, look at that angle. That's just, that's just an ideal spot for a sniper. I've really grown to like the long-range sniper wef weapons. The JF Browns. I didn't at first. So I'm looking at these kills. A unit has over 1,200 and has lost 72. That's great. Um, I'm just looking at the, the... I do that. I'll flip around through my units and just check out the kills to see how my units are doing. Uh, the units are doing very well. And now I have two more units in... Uh, in the water getting zero cover and my units are ganging up on them and just racking up more and more kills more and more XP so the JF's now are at 627 they've taken zero casualties and it's amazing how fast they go up to 800 So I have to keep an eye on the AI, so his three-star unit is charging in. Actually, I want all of his units to charge toward the objective in the south, and he's not doing it. And, and maybe the reason he's not doing it is because my JF Browns have been doing such a good job inflicting casualties that the AI um, doesn't have the morale and, and the condition to charge into the south like he normally does. And the AI is calculated, maybe we shouldn't go there. I, I don't know, but this is the first time the AI just was not interested in it, in, it, in making an attack on that southern objective, which is real, really too bad because I'm, I'm, it's a, it really is a lovely trap. It would have done a great job. I would have annihilated at least three units, if maybe four. So yep, as soon as I see him. Making a move into the water, my units attack, and that won't last very long. So, okay, I just keep checking to see how many I'm killing. 
I have no intention of wiping the enemy out in phase one. I just want to get a bunch of kills, get a bunch of experience. And there's a unit that has 1,300 and has lost almost nothing. Um, 627 kills versus 74 losses. Um, just looking around the different units, uh, the snipers or the detached skirmishers are doing great. There's 504 to 4. Yeah, I'd like to do that all day. 563 to 81. You, you know, these numbers are just looking really, really good. I have one unit that hasn't done particularly well. And an enemy unit just shattered. So that's a, always a very, very good sign. 1300 to 124. So, yeah, it's just great. Again, the, the, the detached skirmishers are doing great. Uh, the, the allied units are getting a lot of kills, too. So, yeah, I don't have to move my artillery. I don't have to maneuver. I'm not attacking. My units have great condition. Uh, I've taken the time to make sure my units have really good weapons. Everyone here has 1861s and Harper's Ferries. So, you know... You're doing a lot of damage per volley. And all and my artillery is of course very good. Yeah, the, I, I can see the JF Browns just fired another volley. And yeah, just keep getting more kills. The only thing about them is uh they run out of supply and also they run out of condition. So you have to they have to refuel or re you know reload ammo or resupply with ammo, that's the word I want. And not only resupply, but you I found you have to rest them. So when they get low in condition, it's a good idea just to park them someplace next to a supply wagon, let them get all their condition back, and then go back and rack up kills, particularly in these multi-day battles. And finally, he's telling me he's going to run out of ammo. So I might as well have him move over toward the supply wagon. I'm having the supply wagon move over toward um, toward him. And we'll resupply him and, and get him rested for the next phase. I don't mind my artillery just racking up kills also. That's not bad either. And I really should uh, detach a few more, or create a few more detached skirmishers to go up and take cheap shots on the enemy as they just stand there and either uh, aggravate the AI to get them to attack or just get free shots either way. And... You know, that's really what I should uh, I, I should have done at this point. But I, it turns out, if they stand still, they take my artillery racks up experience. And if they move forward like this guy, which they do, you know, they kind of recover for a while and then move forward. Um, my units get to recover condition and then go forward with 100% condition and unload. And then fall back and rest a little bit. And again, there's no thought in my mind that I have to wipe these guys out. I did think as I was doing this that I would have liked to have inflicted more casualties on the enemy than what I have inflicted. I, I wasn't happy with the number of casualties, which is probably about 10,000. I'm guessing 10,000, maybe more. But I plan on fighting every phase of the battle uh, up until the last day. And I have a lot of other units, not just, you know, the, the first three divisions of First Corps. I have a lot of other divisions, and I'd like to get experience for all those guys, too. There's no reason to do all the fighting on day one, which is what I usually do, so that the rest of the battle is just boring. What I plan on doing is I plan on dragging it out and making it a fight at every phase.
one unit after another just taking shots. I think my, my JF Browns are back online. And I decided to move my artillery uh, that was in the south. And my three units are in the uh, south are not getting any experience. So what I decided to do is I, I want to get them in the fight. I want them to get some kills. So it, it's become obvious the AI is not going to attack and let me sit in the woods and blast away at him while he stands in the open. I'm going to have to go after the enemy if I want to get some uh, some kills, some experience. Otherwise, those guys are going to do no fighting at all in the first phase. First, I thought I was going to move the artillery. It's actually the allied ar artillery. Up kind of on the flank of the enemy, but now I'm just going to put him behind my infantry. Hopefully entice him to attack across the river, river on the left of the map. Uh, he crosses and then gets caught in... A lot of fire by three units, and one unit shatters, and the second one is going to be torn up. But look at the right. That JF Brown is targeting the unit to the rear, and and as soon as it got blocked by the, the Confederate unit, I hate this mechanic. As soon as it got blocked, as soon as something walked in front of that line of sight, the JF Browns raced forward. So on the left, while I was doing that and white, and shattering two units... That stupid mechanic kicked in. I can't tell you how much I hate it. I just absolutely hate it. It's so stupid. Why did the JF Browns go racing forward? The, the snipers do not race forward. Snipers stay at the max distance that they can take. And the effective shots at the enemy based on the effective range of the weapon. And that's exactly how these units should be programmed. I hate this mechanic. It is so immersion-breaking. It's so stupid. It's so completely wrong. Yeah, snipers race forward to, to charge with bayonets into the enemy. Jesus. So just broken. Yeah, if, if the devs would fix one thing, it would be, um, please fix this. Eventually, we're going to find out ways to deal with it. The way I dealt with it when I did my normal playthrough is I just didn't use um, any of the skirmisher units because I just I get tired of micromanaging them. You, I have 20 units on the map, and I have to spend half of my time watching the 20 units and half of my time watching one sniper so he doesn't um, get wiped out. Uh, what I'd recommend is save the game as your plan. No, I didn't. I didn't save the game. But yeah, this is this is great. I'm loving this. The enemy's going to charge now a bunch, and I'm going to get to rack up a bunch of kills. But save the game so that if the uh, game does something really immersion breaking that it should not do, you just reload and uh, play it from that point. I I didn't do this in, in Gettysburg. I don't think I saved it hardly hardly at all. So do as I say, not as I do. Uh, but if you save frequently and then just reload when stupid stuff happens. Um, you'll probably be less frustrated. Now, I only lost 12 guys, I think, in that, because the attacking units focused on the infantry rather than the J.F. Brown. He must have taken one hit, I'm, I'm guessing, to lose only 12. So the counterattack did work. I really wanted the enemy to attack me, but the counterattack did work, and we're issuing a lot of damage on these three-star units on the right. In the center at Gettysburg, more units are standing in the water with zero cover. And I'm watching units shatter one after another, so that's all very nice. Uh, but I think my units are taking probably too many losses. Uh, my units on the far right are taking too many losses. Uh, I probably should have just stayed on the south side of the water maybe um maybe just you know send some detached skirmishers up to irritate the three-star units to get them to charge forward but uh, i thought standing in like there, there are buildings there and it looks like i have pretty good cover oh i lost an officer a little while ago there was an officer killed or wounded um i i 
this is the worst battle for losing officers. I think I lose two two-star generals, but as you know, I had two two-star generals um, on the bench for that eventuality, and I needed them both. So I do two things that I think are really important. I always have officers on the bench for battles so I can replace officers. And the second thing is I always have money in the bank to replace supply. If you don't have extra weapons, then you can't. There, there may be occasions where you need to replace uh, men with, uh, put raw recruits into a unit, and you can't do it if you don't have weapons in the bank. And you can't replace lost supply if you don't have cash in the bank, and that's really a big deal. Um, and you can't, um, it's difficult to replace officers if you don't have officers in the bank. And I had lots of officers on the bench just waiting. So, and I had two two stars just waiting. So I lost two two stars. I think they were both wounded. And um, in camp, they, they both get replaced instantly. Yeah, Brigadier General Anderson is... I, I th Yeah, th that's a third officer. So I had two two stars and a Brigadier got wounded uh, here. So three, three officers, I think, is the total. We'll see when I go to camp. And still racking up kills. Okay. Yeah, it's two two stars. The, the two guys on the left are two stars. And then there's a one star, and I'm going to fill out the artillery. I didn't lose any guns, but I'm going to fill out the artillery. And uh, as you can see, 4th Division didn't come in. So that ends day one. I hope you enjoyed it. See you day two.